What's going on guys? So I am out here at E-Trailer's corporate headquarters location. I got some E-Trailer folks here with me. Everyone want to wave? This is their enormous facility. Check that out. That's the kind of garage I want on the property to, uh, to work on the RV in. That'd be cool. Got a bunch of tractor trailers over here. Got some RVs here. Got two motorhomes right here. So the point of this video today is to kind of show you a couple things because, you know, I've been working with E-Trailer now for what, over five years roughly? Almost five years, yeah. Yeah, almost five years. And they've been a great sponsor of the channel, but more importantly, they're RVers. And they got some cool stuff out here. I mean, check this out. We have an Airstream Limited. I don't know what model number this is. This thing is really, really cool. I think one of them mentioned it was like the longest Airstream you could buy. This thing actually looks like the fuselage of an aircraft. <laughs> that is pretty crazy from World War II. And then coming over here, you got a Sportsman Classic. You have a Mantis. Now you guys may not remember, but I actually had a chance to interview the, uh, the CEO of Taximantis uh, on the channel a while back. It was actually at the last dealer show in Elkhart, Indiana, where he was out there showcasing some of the perks and pros, and I think he said he came from NASA. Very, very cool. Over here we have a Gray Wolf. We have two motorhomes. These are actually customer units that they're getting uh, tow bars installed on. That's really cool. So, And then we have this Reflection over here who I believe is owned by this guy right here. That's another employee. Oh, okay. But I do own Oh, you the got homestead. the homestead. Okay, so I got it wrong. I was going by and he goes, that's my homestead. And I was looking at the reflection. Oh, and, and I was like, oh, so you live in it. And he goes, well, no. So, okay, so I didn't even see the homestead. All right, so yeah, we got a lot of stuff out here. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. So hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, so let's start off by looking at this Airstream. Is this a 5161? Or was that some type of a number that was on it at some point for something else? It says 5161. There's a giant wasp nest inside of that pocket right there too. So contrary to popular belief, I don't wrestle wasps. I like to stay away from them. But yeah, this is a really cool classic Airstream. And it was actually purchased by an employee here over at E-Trailer to uh, renovate and, and restore. So let's kind of take a look around it without disturbing the, uh, the wasps. All right. So again, I do not know what the model number is. I think it was probably on a badge that used to be right here. Check this out. AC's in there. It's got a four burner gas cooktop or three burner. Actually looks like a four burner gas cooktop in there. Yeah, yeah we got a lot of wasps in here so I'm gonna avoid getting in here if I can. Check this thing out though. So I don't know what the uh, the final you know outcome of this is going to be or how it's going to look whenever it's restored, but I sure would love to keep up with it because this thing is super cool. And again, I would get in there, but I don't want to be trapped in an airstream with a bunch of wasps. Very cool. Maybe I can walk around the side here a little bit. Got screens on all the windows, but here's a pretty good idea of at least what it looks like inside. That is a work in progress. All right, coming back this way because uh, I think I'm angering a lot of stinging insects. But I think you just said, what, 1982? 1982. This thing was manufactured in 1982. How many RVs do you think are still on the road that were manufactured in 1982? That is crazy. And you can see right here how you can buff at it and you can actually make it look really nice. So what I'm wondering is, is, is there a plan to fully restore this? What's the plan with it? There is a plan to fully restore it or use for a another purpose like a little boutique shop or a mobile coffee shop, something of that nature. Well, that is cool. But it is certainly, I mean, it was purchased in this condition though, right? 100%. Yes. All right. So yeah, it was purchased with the sole purpose of saving it and restoring it because there's a lot of history in this and I think it's going to be really cool to follow along. Do you know when, you, when the project kind of starts, when this thing's going to start going through its restoration? That is still to be determined. There's a lot of work that needs to be Yeah. Done. Well, the reason why I say that is because I'm going to be back here in a few months. It'd be cool to see if there were any updates done to it by then, maybe anything on the inside. But again, you get something like this for the long term, and uh, it may be a while before they can get to restoring it. But what would you like to see? You know, put some ideas in the comment section. What would you like to see done to this? Like, you know, I'm sure that the uh, the owner has some plans, but, you know, I'm sure that, uh, that they'd be willing to kind of listen to some other options and other ideas. But... Yeah, let's move on to some of the other stuff they have around here. Okay, so now we're looking at the Tax Outdoors Mantis. 
And again, I filmed one of these in Elkhart a couple years ago, and it was a much smaller version. And when I interviewed the uh, the owner of the company who has a NASA background, he explained his whole kind of purpose behind building this and designing it. And it was to give you more with less space, but also be very creative with how you utilize the space and to connect you with the outdoors. So the same person who owns that Airstream actually owns this. All right, check this out. Now this thing is ready to go. I mean, this is ready to go camping. A lot of cool aspects to this that you may not be able to see just offhand, and that's the fact that this top will actually lift up as well. So you get a lot more room over here, and you can see that Tyler actually opened up the back of it already. Very, very cool. You can see all of the, uh, the marine grade plywood that's used in this. Very, very well built units. These things are just incredibly well built. When you get into this, you're actually getting to, into a lifestyle. It's almost like Airstream in the sense that these are so creative and unique and you have to know what you're getting into. And this is just the type of camping lifestyle that you would you would want something like this, where you open up the back and you're, you know, you're open up to the outdoors and you have the ability to, to kind of not only camp, but also be part of that outdoor experience very very cool check this out so this is your sleeping area this is kind of your back patio door when it's open you got some stairs to take you up to this top platform up here you have some lights you have your backup camera and it has a really nice polycarbonate style windows here looks like jake's opening up the top over here as well let's go inside one more time so you can uh, see what that's all about so this is what it looks like from the outside check this out let's climb inside that's pretty cool isn't it almost feels like you're like in a mars rover got your cooktop right here maybe your sink so your sink's right there two burner gas cooktop you got your little truma portable refrigerator here as well all sorts of cool little storage Again, this is really the type of thing that you would get out there, maybe on the beach or maybe in the desert or maybe in the mountains and you just wanna have a really cool little place to, to be able to use as a, like a cabin. Right here is your wet bath. A lot of people were wondering where that would be. And you can pull a little curtain up all the way around so it gives you privacy whenever you're using that space as well. And this also folds down into a chair or bed. Very, very cool. But again, employee of e-trailer. This is just shows that when you're talking to the people at e-trailer, you're not just talking to an employee at a company that, that knows really nothing about the products they sell. The people that work here actually live the lifestyle as well. Very cool. We got some pictures getting taken. So what are you trying to do today? So today we're showing off the Kurt Premium uh, bike rack here on the motorhome. And what we're going for is really just getting like the clearances back here with the bumper. Like this motorhome over there, we had some issues with the bike sitting on there. Mm -hmm. The handlebars would swing and kind of nick on it a little bit. Obviously, being gentle, showing that off just so that way when people put in this motorhome on the website and they are looking at this rack, they see it. Yeah, you can actually see motorhome. it is compatible and it does work and it does fit. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So what's a perk of this specific uh, Kurt bike rack? So the main thing with this one is if you got kids' bikes where the mm -hmm. frames are real small and tight up together, it narrows down down here at the end so these last two cradles are perfect for if you got any little kiddos with those bikes that may or may not be a little finicky and require an adapter bar for working on other hanging style racks okay very good so is this e-bike rated uh no it's not okay so i don't think there's any hanging style bike racks that are e-bike rated no they'll, they'll all typically have a pretty lower weight capacity mm -hmm. we do have a ton of uh platform e style right yeah they're all that platform style and we'll probably get into those test fits later this afternoon you know you know that was a loaded question because i just wanted to see if you guys knew the answer to it but that just kind of goes to show the fact that they know what they're talking about with products like this the key is, is if you're going to get a product like this on the back of your rv you know you could go to i'm going to say at amazon you buy a product like this you throw it on and you have absolutely no idea it's not rated to hold e-bikes then you throw your $2,000 e-bike on the back of it, $5,000 e-bike, $6,000 e-bike on the back of it. You go down the road and you get to where you're going all happy and then you realize you want to go for a bike ride and you don't have any bikes or they've been dragging the whole time. And this is stuff that actually happens. It actually happens. People buy products. They don't really understand if it's rated to hold what they're thinking and then they load them up 
and then they fail. Just like the bumper racks you guys carry, you carry the reinforcements to make sure they can actually hold the weight. A lot of people will just strap something like this to a four inch tubular bumper on the back of an RV. They get where they're going and they realize they've been dragging their bicycles on the road because their RV twisted off, you know, half the way to where they're going. I live in a more rural area, so mm -hmm. I see people drive into campgrounds all the time towards the weekends, heading home after work on a Friday. So many times I see these bike racks with like cam buckle straps or ratchet straps looped around. It looks like a circus tent strung up because yeah. they can't handle the weight and they just make it work. Yep. But yep. hopefully by generating this content, getting these pictures and videos, it helps people avoid that circumstance, avoid hopefully not losing any bikes on the yeah. road or scraping them. Yep, and you, you see it all, a lot of times too where you know it's on the verge of failing. You see them starting to lean back a little bit. I see so many racks that people have put on their bumpers and it's starting to lean back and it's got a generator on it and you're thinking, do you not realize that something's about to break? Mm -hmm. So just the fact that they do what they do here like this. I mean, we were out here filming some of these RVs and I saw these gentlemen out here taking pictures of this and I literally came up to him, asked him what he was doing. They didn't know why I was up here. And, and the reality is, is they are taking pictures and doing what they do best here. And that's making sure you get the information you need to make a smart, informed purchasing decision. That's what it comes down to. And then they support you on the back end. Very cool. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, and while we're looking at these, so this is a new Grand Design Reflection. The owners of it brought it here to get the Reese Sidewinder installed. So what is the Sidewinder? The Sidewinder is a pin box replacement, and what it permits is it changes the, the turning angle of the actual RV and the truck. So whenever this is hitched up, instead of this being your pivot point, your pivot point is now back here. Now here's one of the things that, that you probably want to keep in mind. If you are going to be driving on the highway, you probably do not want this rotating. You still want it to rotate from here, mainly because if you move your rotational point back here, you can actually create sway because now you're moving your pivot point to behind the axle. By locking it in place like it is here, so you got these two big bolts that can go in place right here, preventing this from rotating then it basically turns it into a standard fifth wheel pin box where your rotation's right here, which should be directly above your rear axle. If you are getting to your campground or you have to make a turn, like in a gas station or truck stop where you don't have the flexibility of, you know, making a wide turn, then you can take these bolts out right here and you can execute your turn because your pivot point will switch from there to here. And that gives you the ability to do that. Now, I believe there's a wedge that would also go in place whenever you're using this hooked up to your truck. And that wedge keeps it from rotating right here. It basically locks the pin or the king pin in place so this part of your, your pin box can't rotate. And it only allows this to. Now, what you don't want to do is have this locked back here and have the wedge in place. Otherwise, you're not turning. You're going to break something. This is a, this is a good example of a a king pin replacement so that you don't have to have the big bulky slider fifth wheel hitch in the mm -hmm. bed of your truck. Yep. You just have to understand that when you move to something that allows a truck to do something that it may not normally be able to do, again, like a short bed truck with a conventional fifth wheel pin box on it, you have to understand there might be a few more steps to do the things you want to do to be safe. So this does give you the ability to use this with a short bed truck. Again, just keep in mind what your limitations are gonna be when you are on the highway or what this can cause. If it's not gonna be a windy day, if it's gonna be very calm, if you're not going through harsh weather conditions, then you'd probably be fine just, just leaving that as your main pivot point and keeping the king, kingpin locked in place. But if it's going to be a windy day, if you don't anticipate that you could go through storms, things like that, then I would set this up conventionally so the pin box right there, that the king pin is actually your pivot point, just to reduce the chance that wind is going to impact the fifth wheel, you know, like a, a travel trailer would. But all that said, because you are significantly closer to your rear axle than like a conventional bumper pull trailer, you'll never get the type of sway that a conventional bumper pull trailer will do. There's so much lever action behind the actual truck that can cause sway because your pivot point is moved several feet behind, actually probably like four feet behind your truck versus this, which is only maybe two feet behind your, your axle. So this is still gonna be better but yeah, this is just a couple precautions to take. I think for the most part, you're, you're gonna be fine with this type of setup, even if you kept that unlocked. But as a best practice, just remember, you are now moving your pivot point to behind your axle as opposed to over your axle. Very cool. 
So uh, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.